What's up, Skywatchers? What is up indeed? Monday, December 15th, 2025. When the fog first rolled into California's Central Valley, most people thought nothing of it. Winter fog is just normal out there. The farmers call it Thule fog, the kind that settles low across the orchards and hides the farm fields under a blanket of white. But this time, something was different. People could feel it before they could explain it. The fog didn't smell right, it didn't feel right, and it didn't leave. Day after day, the entire agricultural corridor, 400 miles of farmland, dairies, orchards, and vineyards stayed buried under a haze that tasted metallic, burned the throat, clung to the skin like something chemical. Residents tried to describe it, and one word kept coming up more often than not, and that one word is toxic. Another said fog shouldn't taste like this. And another, it won't burn off no matter how bright the sun gets. That was the first clue something was wrong. Now fog is supposed to be simple. It forms at night when the ground cools, the air near the surface chills enough to condense, water droplets, nothing more. Quiet, harmless, the kind of fog you see in postcards. But this fog didn't behave like that. It held its position like it was anchored, it spread like it was being shaped, and it tasted like chemicals soaked into the air. And over the farm fields, acres of soil sprayed year-round with pesticides and nitrates, ammonia, dust suppressants, and fungicides. The fog acted like a sponge moving through a chemical warehouse. Now what fog really is, it's a million tiny droplets, each one a micro-container, a collector of everything suspended in the atmosphere. And the Central Valley is one of the most polluted agricultural basins in the United States. When I pulled up the radar, the first thing I saw was the same thing I've been seeing for years. Those persistent electromagnetic fingerprints sitting over the Central Valley. Light blue patches, non-meteorological returns, signals that have nothing to do with rainfall. Now these blue electromagnetic pulses, you can find them across the country, but California's are among the strongest and most consistent. So a lot of the electromagnetic radiation we see comes from Nexrad Towers, 5G grids, a microwave backhaul, agricultural electromagnetic infrastructure, and high voltage transmission lines. A dense electromagnetic environment, always humming and always active. Fog forms inside of that field. Fog moves along that field line. Fog carries whatever the field creates. Now water does respond to electromagnetic fields, not because it traps radiation, but because water is polar. It has a natural electric dipole, and when that electromagnetic field hits it, the molecules rotate, align, vibrate, and shift their structure. Fog droplets can grow differently, merge differently, hold pollutants differently, and behave differently. When the electromagnetic environment around them is altered, and peer-reviewed research shows electromagnetic fields can influence aerosol charging, droplet nucleation, microphysical growth, atmospheric conductivity, collision, coalescence, and the stability of the entire boundary layer. That means fog doesn't just collect chemicals. Fog carries the fingerprints of the electromagnetic system operating around it. So when the valley is blanketed in pesticides, nitrates, ammonias, industrial aerosols, wildfire residue, and electromagnetically charged atmosphere ions, fog becomes the perfect delivery system, a low-level carrier, a boundary layer trap, a ground-level exposure event. And people feel it instantly, in their lungs, their throats, their sinuses, because fog brings airborne chemicals directly into contact with human skin and the respiratory tissues. That explains the chemical taste, that explains the burning throats, that explains the nausea, the convergence of chemtrails, aerosolized agriculture, industrial pollutants, stagnant inversion layers, electromagnetic radiation, saturation, microphysical alterations, and engineered boundary layer conditions, all appearing at the same time. Before I wrap this up, I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who supports this channel. To those of you who hit that thumbs up and share these videos and help get this information out. 
That support is priceless. Much love and many thanks. Okay, Sky Watchers, stay aware, be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.